I'm making the rosette for my acoustic guitar build. And as you can see, it's a very geometric design. Lots of identical pieces, 24 identical pieces, all with the same two arcs um, cut into them. And this is just crying out for a jig. Now, circle cutting jigs are nothing new, but the particular challenge here is to be able to cut the same two radii on every piece quickly, efficiently, and with great precision because this has all got to fit together really well. So I don't want to have to keep setting up the jig each time and trying to get the radius uh, precise. Um, I just need to set it once and then just do each piece over and over again. So what I need is a jig that can cut both arcs at the same time, well sort of at the same time. So I had to think about this and I did uh, a mock-up in Blender. So as you can see, what we have here is we have a carriage which carries the veneer or the abalone and it moves between two end stops that are adjustable and the overall radius is set according to where you position the whole jig on your scroll saw. The end stops just adjust the, uh, the difference between the, the two radii. So that's the concept. I guess we better go and see if we can build it. I've left the camera running because I'm pretty sure you saw me cut that whole slot and um, it's melted itself back together again. Oh the joys of cutting perspex or acrylic whatever you want to call it. I think I might try again with a, maybe a slower blade speed.
Well, he's just saw me pass the blade entirely through this piece of perspex and it's still intact, but hopefully weak. There we go. Hmm, is the blade dull? I didn't think it was. It certainly feels pretty sharp. Uh, maybe it's too sharp. But I'm not going to change the blade just yet because I want to move on. Uh, get, the, get the MDF cut. Oh dear. I'll have to tidy this up. This is quite the worst cut I've ever made, I think. It's just been nibbling at it. Horrible. This is the slider and I've got to drill the clamping hole and rather than use a pillar drill I'm going to hand drill this so that the the slot guides the thing in. I might regret this but uh, this is the plan so I'm going to clamp this down and hopefully this will sort of self-centre. I know I don't have to drill it around here, I've marked, marked where I want to drill it is there much, there's going to be much play? We'll see. <laughs> Can't tell when it's gone through when you've got it clamped down. Right. So far, so good. A little bit of play, but we've got to put these in. And now the first of the end stops, same idea as before, hopefully. This will just guide the drill home, although actually there is a lot of play. So I'm not sure this is such a good idea. The, uh, there is a little bit of play in that. I'm actually going to mark where I want the hole, because I have got it drawn pretty accurately. I'm waffling. That's where I want the hole. It's a brad point, so it'll just drop in the hole. Okay, let's go. Got to be a bit careful with the countersinking here because the there's, I haven't got much thickness to play with, and it's quite a large head of the bolt that I've got to completely countersink. So I want it completely countersink, countersunk, but I don't want to go too deep. And this is a really coarse countersink that vibrates and creates sort of hexagonal holes. I'm not, I'm not impressed with this kind of sink. No, it's still going to go deeper. Yep. This is the bit I'm dreading. I'm using an old drill, um, a different drill to what I drilled the MDF with. This is a standard twist drill. Um, it's not blunt. So this could grab, it could bite in, but we'll see. I'll try and go slowly and see what happens and not press hard. And I want to make sure it's not drifting, which it isn't. So far, so good. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I dread Perspex because it's so easy for the, the, the drill to bite and just pull at the work. But that's fine. I have to super glue the bolts into the holes because there's nothing to stop them turning around. I want to be able to just access this from the top all the time and not have to put anything underneath. And they're not carriage bolts, but I think that should be okay. So 
So the blade's going to go here, and this is going to slide around, and we will be cutting through. This is this is sacrificial. Um, <laughs> whether or not Perspex is the right material, I'm not sure, uh, given the troubles I had cutting this uh, originally. But um, there, there will be a, a permanent slot cut in that, which will be um, sawn through each time uh, with a new piece of abalone or inlay or whatever on there. The reason I've used Perspex is because of the tear out problems on the surface of MDF. I'm going to keep gluing, um, taping um, bits of veneer onto here and, and removing them and MDF is just not durable enough. So that, that's, the blade's going to be there and this is going to be sawing like this. And that's for the, the first radius, uh, the outer radius, and then we move the slider in and without moving anything else, this is all clamped down, we can do the next radius with blade closer to the pivot point. So that's the idea, that is basically finished. First thing to do is cut the outer radius slot in the Perspex. I, I'm using the same blade as before, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go a lot slower this time to avoid melting the Perspex and uh, the blade's moving slower, I'm going to move slower. Um, so we'll cut the outer radius, move the carriage, cut the inner radius, and then we'll be able to cut the abalone with a finer blade. This gap here is the width of the tile that we're cutting, it's the difference between the two radii. And I've got it set to 9.6, which is 9mm, the width of the tile we want, plus the 6mm curve. And all we have to do is slacken off the bolt that holds the carriage, slide the carriage forward to the end stop, tighten that up again. We, we can now cut a smaller radius. And then we can cut consistent width tiles just by sliding it backwards and forwards with a new piece of abalone on each time. That's the idea. Having got this all set up, I'm now going to have to change everything because I want to put a finer blade on and I don't have a fine pinned blade so the new blade is going to be mounted further forward and I think I'd have to take this platform off anyway to, uh, sorry, the, the jig, I'd have to take the jig off in order to swap the blades over That's tight without overdoing it. Right, let's get reassembled. Hmm. <laughs> it's trying to move as I'm clamping it up. I don't want to clamp the carriage, obviously. Masking tape burnished down onto the carriage, masking tape on the back of the abalone, a little bit of super glue, 
Ooh, quite a lot of super glue, hopefully that's not too much. And we stick the abalone down to the cab cabbage, <laughs> to the carriage. success and it's repeatable I can now create an identical piece for the next one which I will now do so pleased about this. I, yeah. <laughs> Don't you love it when a plan comes together? Um, I'm really, really pleased with how this, this works. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a very specific purpose because it will only cut short arcs the way I've, the way I've got the, um, the, the end stop set and everything. I'm sure with a little bit of design, uh, a little bit of um, uh, redesign, maybe you can b build something that will cut uh, whole circles. But, but then, you're not going to be able to cut concentric whole circles. Um, would you actually want to do that? I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> I haven't included this jig as part of the, this video as part of the guitar build series. Um, this was really just to show the, the jig in action. The next video in the guitar build series will be the construction of the rosette itself using the jig. So make sure you subscribe um, so you get, get to see that. Uh, like this video, share it, do whatever you want with it, comment, all the usual things, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!